Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series. It's custom 3v3 pro action on the cards this afternoon. Exciting stuff, I'm sure you'll agree. First of all, going out to my newest subscribers, fantastic to have you on board. Hope you enjoy the show guys and if you like the content but you're not sure what you're looking at, the game is Supreme Commander Forged Alliance, not Supreme Commander 2. I can't stress how much you don't want to make that mistake. It's Supreme Commander Forged Alliance. It's available on Steam for £9 or whatever the equivalent is in your local currency and all you need to do to come play with us over at FAF is once you have that Steam game installed, download the Forged Alliance Forever multiplayer client. You can find a link to that in the description below this and all of my other videos. What will it allow you to do? Well, you can come play with us, chat with us, browse our replay vaults, our mod vaults, check out awesome community-driven content like the map generator, for instance, which generates custom maps every single game for a brand new feel. Uh, for every multiplayer game you play, of which we will be highlighting one today. It really is the best £9 you can possibly think to spend, because once you do that for the Steam game, you don't have to make another outlay. It's all that content laid on free of charge. All right, that's enough of that jazz. Let's get on with today's game. As we said, it's custom 3v3. It's pros. It's going down on a generated map. I'm ready. You guys are ready, and the players are sure as hell ready. So let's go on over to the game zone and see how they're going to get on. Ching. Kaching, instant loading. That's what we like to see. We'll call this team one up here at the top. This team two down here at the bottom, going first for team one. It is I say there he is going Cybrin, opening first land in regal purple, and over to his east. Took me a while to work out what he was there. <laughs> it's the it's the low light at this time of day. They're playing at twilight. That's what it is. Uh, Emperor Penguin next up for Team 1. He's going Aeon in fabulous, vivacious Violet, opening first land. And team member number 3 for Team 1. Last but not least for them, it's Kavat, another spiky space socialist, Cybrin for the rest of you. And he is opening first land in Elephantine Grey. So there we have it for Team 1. Let's check out Team 2 down here at the bottom right. Mosey, our first Seraphim of the day in baby blue. He's going first land. Team member number two to his left across the water there. It's none other than good friend and firm community favorite, Olex, going his customary baby pink opening first land. And last but not least for team two, it's going to be Tex in combat green, another UEF, and he's going first land, second air. So we've got two Cybrin and an Aeon for team one, two UEF and a Seraphim for team two. All of the races represented how very 2021 and pluralistic and whatnot. Now let's check out this generated map that the algorithm has produced for us today. Well, I mean, it's pretty awesome when you look at it. To think that that's not designed by somebody, it does get me every single time. This is like a reverse Setons with a, a big landmass in the middle and then two causeways going off in either direction towards roughly the top right and top bottom left corners. Uh, and two ponds either side which uh, essentially are untraversable between the two unless you have some naughty, naughty, walkie, walkie cyber naval tech which doesn't give a hoot about what sort of uh, theatre it's fighting in. It'll just sprout legs and go for a wander. Lots and lots of mass, little pockets of core mass from other redundant starting locations over here on the central landmass, and then, of course, dotted around on these islands north and south, and decent amounts of reclaim, some big boulders kicking around here, lots of smaller stones wandering around also, lots of trees, and a couple of civilian bases as well, equipped with both T1 and T2 anti-air, and a couple of T1 point defense as well, just to make life a little bit irritating for rogue engineers as they wander past looking for reclaim or things to capture they get a dirty old plasma cannon to the face instead, waiting to blap them. So there we have it. Two and a half minutes into the game, our ACUs and engineers are starting to leave their main base. We go up here to the top left, you can see that Ice is already getting to work on naval yards. Nearly uh, one and a half done there for him. And the answer why? Well, I mean, it's a very tiny island. <laughs> There's not much going on for him up here at the top left hand corner he was born on an island to a crater four mass and a hydro and that's pretty much well one extra mass on the plateau that he can't even get to yet but he's left that anyway with his com heading towards the mainland engineer preceding him going to make landfall any moment we've got some scout air scouts some interceptors out and about kicking about and one t1 bomber from olex which is homing in if not towards that engineer then certainly up towards the top left hand corner and i say's base but that might now home in on that engineer as that lead interceptor and air scout just drifted past 
past it. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't change direction onto that. Well, he hasn't yet. He seems to still be drifting. Uh, now he's given an attack code by the looks of things. That looks like Ice is in desperate need of a left or a right turn, but he's not going to get it. Garboom, Engineer Toast. And there's another one lined up perfectly for the next bombing run. But he didn't take it. Didn't get the scout on that. There are clumps of engineers up around this naval yard. Second naval yard was abandoned by the looks of things. Interesting. Went on to do other things, or at least use those engineers to start pumping out more early naval units. You can see one submarine heading south. We've already got one naval yard belonging to Tex up and running. He's queued up an awful lot. Lots of T1 naval factories over at the western edge of the map. And Tex actually went for a drop as well over here. Put four or five engineers on the ground. Started a land factory. Saw Isis come and went nope. And is so going to evac the area off to safer territory. Where a couple of interceptors looking like they were going to shoot that down. Belonging to Emperor Penguin just over here. But they decided not to get involved. Instead discouraged by the escort detail from Tex. Two or three inties surrounding there. And it looks like Tex is just going to do the old drop engineer off at different places one down there another one perhaps to this core mass over here which is over the midpoint interesting stuff let's drift further right and see what mosey and Kavat are up to Kavat getting to work on a second naval yard that's quite an aggressive placement for him putting one out right in the middle there working on a frigate but only 14 percent done and he's got an inbound hostile frigate from Mosey, about to turn up any second. That engineer probably going to be the first thing to go pop. Indeed it will. That'll cancel construction on that second naval facility. Will he stick around and try and take out that naval yard? That probably would be the smart move. Oh, transport getting picked off by the civilian flak there as Olex tries to transport something past it. Let's see what it was. Probably more engineers maybe heading up to establish some kind of base up here. These really would be perfect positions to try and grab. No mass, unfortunately, there, but solid elevated positions. You could dump some point defense on top of it, maybe some artillery. Over here to the bottom left, I say turning up with that frigate. And getting himself sunk by a tiger shark belonging to Tex, defending his naval yards over there, but we have two more submarines, this time from Ice heading down to that position. And that frigate did complete from that first naval yard. Gets embroiled into a shooting match with Mosey's frigate. And there are now two of those. He's going to evac in the face of overwhelming odds with just 400 odd hit points remaining and leave that naval yard probably to its fate. Do we have any more? We have another one recently constructed up here, not currently producing anything. Engineer's not going to make the same mistake and let that one get taken out by any frigates. They're getting to work on a torpedo launcher. And there's another one over here in the bay as well for Kavat. So Kavat establishing naval production in multiple positions. Not getting any doubling up yet from either of these players. You really uh, probably want to see some of these island-based players just dip a toe into the naval production side of things to try and help win their respective ponds. Especially important as well for Team 1, being as they've got two Cybrans that would really open up the game for them, allowing them to cross over if they win one pond with many of their destroyers. That really should be the play for them. Civilian outpost conquered. Not going to go and capture those flak batteries. Captured one of them. Recycle another. So outpost defeated there by Emperor Penguin. And this one down here slowly getting taken down by Lobos belonging to Olex. Olex loses a tank, drifts a little bit too close to the firing arc of that north-facing plasma cannon. Oh, hello. 
Those frigates that were making a nuisance of themselves belonging to Mosey earlier in the middle of that pond discover Kavat's harbour over at the causeway, where the causeway meets the central landmass. Second torpedo launcher on the way. I mean, to make sure that that one's not brushed aside. Look at the uh, air massing, the air power massing at that little island belonging to Mosey. He's going to run a fighter screen out in front of some T1 bombers. Is he going to go after this naval yard from the sky? Try and make certain of it there. Well, lots and lots of frigates. And they're going to be successful in taking down that naval facility. Can't do anything about these slivers. Three of them. So he's probably going to lose most, if not all, of these frigates as they withdraw. But they did at least take out that naval yard. And if these bombers can do the same over here, that will provide an opportunity for Mosey to get well ahead in the naval game on this side of things. They target the engineers. First of all, a lovely split sortie there. Takes care of both clumps of engineers. That naval factory was on the way to Tech 2. Still is, but it's getting base upgrade speed now. Not getting any assistance from the engineers. All of the bombers did get shot down, though. So they've slowed things up, but they haven't locked Kavat out of that southeastern ocean as yet. T2 upgrade on the way for Olex. Pressure being brought to bear through the middle now from Emperor Penguin who's got masses and masses of auroras and is a stone's throw away now from Tex's commander. He's got the Zeph amp on board that commander. The gun upgrade. So we'll probably be ready to wreck some Aeon face should Penguin advance any further forward, but it looks like he's going to withdraw a bit and consolidate around his comm. It's just getting down and moist in that central pond. And yes, I use the word moist completely unashamedly. If that is an issue for you, then I suggest you take it elsewhere. I say on the move with his commander. You know, some people really detest the word moist. That is why I enjoy saying it. For me, it's right up there with words like nostril and crevice. Spam wars getting underway over in the east with a solid showing from Mosey brushing aside that early forward artillery vanguard but there's a big old horde of mantis a little bit further back with a whole new wave of medusa artillery filing into its ranks so mosey with submarines just chilling out in the middle Kavat has rebuilt his naval yard over there in the harbor area and has started work on another but then switch production of the engineers back over to assist the first one. Taking a look on which team's doing better on eco side of things. Well, team one is about 5k up in total mass accrued. It's like 91 to 86 over the course of the game. Generated eco, they seem to be up about... 50-odd mass, something like that. It's quite significant. But Team 2 seems to be faring slightly better for the time being in the oceans. Lots and lots of tiger sharks and thunderheads, the frigates and the submarines causing problems for Issei, who is dropping back with his two remaining tridents to cover what is now quite a hefty group of naval yards, up to five over there. That might be more than just about anybody else. Mosey going for Tech 2 Navy, producing T2 engineers from that for the time being. Major, major engagement kicking off right in the middle of the map as Olex advances with assistance from Tex. Olex leading the charge with his comm. He's got T2 engineering suite and Zef Amp on board. Dirty amounts of 
firepower and HP. Emperor Penguin, who's taken a couple of hits. He's into the yellow on about just shy of 8,000 hit points. Drops into the water for cover. A run-by attempt from Isay. Trying to sneak a few Mantis past Texas Com. He might get one or two through. Looks like two have made it for the time being, but he needs to stay on the move, and he's not doing it. That will allow Tex to catch him if he doesn't get a move order soon. Back over to the middle. Emperor Penguin steps out of the pond to put some smack down with his double upgraded com on the advancing strikers. Olex dodging left and right with his commander trying to evade the inbound fire putting some shots of his own down Emperor Penguin on about 50% of his base health at about 6,200 hit points Engineers back here hurriedly working on some defences a way to stall this attack but he's also now getting assistance from Kavat who's moving in with his commander lots and lots of spam on the field for him Olex is not going to be able to continue this push even with his T2 mismatch, which he's got here. Some pillars on the field up front. He's going to continue to harass Penguin's com, but I don't think he's going to be able to score any more territory. In fact, he's probably going to have to yield some now as Emperor Penguin and Kavat try to push him back through this mini causeway in between the two central ponds there. All kicking off in the center. No movement from Isay's commander, who's still chilling at that little headland over on the northwest of the main landmass. Emperor Penguin with lots of asylums now, giving him some decent coverage and defensive capabilities. Olex has some parashields up front as well, but it is looking like... He might have to yield this position. He's thrown down a triad. That should be priority one for team one as they push forward. They want to take that out and not absorb too much damage from it. A little help from some of the Medusas over here. EMPs that triad and takes it out. Olex now backed up to his side of the ponds. He's got some mongoose in here, some extra ranged coverage. Some lovely little trades going on back and forth here. A couple of chariots turn up just to have a look. Interesting decision there. Not exactly what that's about. And over here we've got a T2 gunship belonging to Tex. Busy wailing away on some of these T2 mexes belonging to Ice. Two of them down already. A third about to bite the dust. And Isay doesn't like the look of that. He pulls his calm out into the water. Just to get himself some coverage. Looks dangerous when you first look at it. Because of all of these subs. But they are bugging out. Has got his navy nearby. And he's got a lot of subs in here. And one cruiser further back. Some work by those Seraphim T1 submarines from Mosey. They've taken out the naval yards in that bay area once again, but now we're seeing some T2 vessels from Kavat from the naval yards up here. Salem's and Sirens alike. That's going to give them some good long-range capabilities and deal with this T1 sub problem, sub problem in equal measure. Just has to bring those round here now and he can start bombarding these positions from the coast we do have T2 destroyers down here belonging to Mosey. Will he prioritize naval production a little bit more? Well, hard to see how much more he could do. He's got all of the engineers on the world on that. Could work on some more naval yards, I suppose. Olex now moving up towards the top left-hand corner. You can see the previously taken out Mexes have been replaced with T1s, and as a result of that first attack, Ice has been really busy. He's got all of the tracers in the world, T1 anti-air, enough to frighten away these gunships that move on over here. One of them still sticks in range and gets shot down, but the other one on the other side is going to manage to take out that T2 Mex belonging to Penguin. T1 T2 
team one I think just about up still on generated eco fluctuations hard to tell they're definitely up in total eco still by about 20k <coughs> Siren and Salem just outside the encroaching bubbled fleet of Tex. The bubble does collapse. Quite a lot of T2 vessels in here belonging to Tex. Is Tex actually focusing on the high priority vessels? I'm not sure he is. Some of the Salem's drawing some fire. I think this is looking like it might potentially be a win. Oh, I don't know. T2 vessels seem few and far between now. We still have these Coopers for Tex. There's not many torpedo based vessels left. Back over here in the east, some forward progress from Kavat. Bunch of hoplites in his unit mix over here, giving him some ranged capabilities. But T2 upgrade completes for Mosey. Took him 38 seconds. Probably going to see him advance now, maybe start a bit of a PD creep. Interceptors tangle over the top of Kavat's forward causeway position. And Olex gets roasted, absolutely roasted by Emperor Penguin, who not only had many more interceptors than him, he also had a bunch of swift wins in the mix, the T2 fighters, so had numeracy and tech advantage. Tex over in the west seems to have yielded that ground now and backed up towards his naval yards. I say might be breaking through down here but we're about to get another naval engage 20 and a half minutes gone and Volthu's over here now helping to ward away ward off those hoplites and indeed their associated spam for Kavat who's dropping back to a more secluded position Olex sticking some buzz kills in the ocean or in the pond, rather. Why not? Probably because of that attack missile launcher that he's seen right there. He's got a few mobile missile launchers of his own in the mix by the looks of things. Going after the Oblivion turret, first of all. Asylums move in to cover the remaining structures. They've already lost that shield gen. Engineers getting to work on some tactical missile defense as the amount of inbound missiles seems to be increasing. Emperor Penguin now drawing fire from the Mongoose up front. He's on around 7,000 hit points. Seems to be where he's been at for most of the last 10 minutes or so. And now taking a lot more fire. Dropping down to 4,000 hit points. Dips himself back inside the shields before the shield collapses. Strap bomb over the top. Will Emperor Penguin be going out? He's got another shield. This time it's a base shield. That strap bomber, did it get immediately shot down? It seemed to fly straight into the pack of interceptors lurking on the other side of that shield. But Olex senses blood now. Is advancing forward with both his comm and his spam. He's going to stop to get a land factory up on the causeway. Penguin not enjoying this engagement at all is going to dip into that western pond there with about 4,300 HP left on the commander. Olex playing it pretty ballsy right now and he's got some ASFs in the mix up front. It's a shame he couldn't have kept that strap bomber alive and come around for another pass. But just unlucky he happened to bowl straight into the interceptors. Sometimes that's the sort of thing that can happen though. You think you're going to get a kill you're like, I've just got to get that bomb off. It doesn't matter if he flies into the Air Force on the other side. Going for the kill, but was unlucky in the execution. And now those interceptors belonging to Emperor Penguin getting tangled up in Mosey's Air Force. But he's got assistance from Kavat as well. And Mosey's Air Force is a bingo on fuel. 
No air staging facilities nearby. And they are going to get slaughtered as a result. Mosey pushing north-easterly with some torpedo bombers, taking fire from two cruisers as they fly overhead. And Mosey's headland base over here not faring well in the slightest as Kavat breezes past with his T2 and T1 navy. This is starting to look bad for Team 2. They've been holding their own more or less in eco. Yes, they're down, but they're not getting further behind. But they are losing some ground in the ocean down here. Tex counter-attacking, meanwhile, over in the west. Can he ha get a breakthrough and even things up on the naval side of things? Bottom right, this is bad news for Team 2. Mosey now facing... Salem and Trident pressure at his T2 naval yard that's taken a lot of damage already. He's got one destroyer out here trying to mitigate the damage and take down as many frigates as he can in the time limit. But ultimately, thanks to some inbound fire from the frigates and those torpedo bombers overhead, it goes down, as does the naval yard shortly afterwards. Kavat now in striking range of leveling Mosey's base. He's still got three Salem's and two Sirens alive. And the ship to ground weaponry open up. And that's really bad. Tex needs to grab a win over in the west, otherwise T2, Team 2 is bang in trouble. Olex getting a T3 upgrade on his comm, 42% done there. Could we see some Ravager creep down the middle? If he can advance, take out this forward causeway base belonging to Kavat. That could be very interesting. Split off the land bridge between Kavat and Emperor Penguin. Bulwark shielded Navy forcing Ice back. And he's also got land units in amongst the headland as well. Tex getting some work done against Ice here. But the shield ultimately collapses. He got enough frigates to hold. I'm not sure he does. There are more subs coming in to assist. Back down here, what's going on? He's left four Salem's doing what needs to be done. Ow, ow, ow. Ooh, nice reclaim there. Prevents it from going critical. Saves the shield gem, which then pops on and saves the other T2P gem with 45 hit points. But you get the feeling this is all just a bit academic for this little base. Although two more Salem's drift off. I guess he feels he can do what needs to be done with just the two. Wanting to make sure that no more Navy gets established. He's shifted his attention to these naval yards over here. He's taken out three. One still remains. Cruiser needs to be brought to bear. That's just sitting idly by this little sandbank. Needs to be brought in to attack finish off that island for certain and once again the seesaw over in the west continues Tex forced back and now losing his destroyers to the pursuing Salem's and Tridents Olex with the T3 engineering suite completed he's got personal shield he's got parashields he's got 18,000 base HP and a 19,000 personal shield. But there's a lot, a lot of Cerberus turrets in here. And more on the way all the time. Tons of engineers working on new defenses. But Olex, seeming like he's invincible, continues to push forward. Nonetheless, firing overcharges into these clumps of units up here. He's got 60 kills on board that commander. But his shield is half depleted. And it looks like he's absorbing... 
T3, or sorry, T2 static artillery fire. There must be some Gunthers in there. And that's taking huge chunks off that shield. He drops back under that parashield, but that immediately collapses as well. I think he's bitten off more than he could chew here. It needs to drop back, and I think that's just what he's going to do. There's just too many point defense in this locale. Nice bit of defense there from Kavats. Shield depleted. He's still got full base armor HP. Having taken out the headland, that little group of T1 spam moving in to harass some mexes. Looks like he might score a T2 kill. There it goes. Surprising considering there were some spectres nearby. That T3 mobile artillery certainly looks like it. Where is that coming from? We do have a uh, harbinger kicking about. So Emperor Penguin at the T3 unit phase forward momentum continues over here and it's probably because Tex has got himself a battle cruiser that's going to carve him some cyber and stakes right there with his epic iron cannons of doom torpedo bombers overhead from Tex also harassing Oleg's still under Gunther fire. He's got a little bank of Gunthers there, three of them. Best bet just to drop back over here, I think. Ah, oh, Mosey's joined the party. Coming across the pond now, and he's got T2 Engineering Suite gun upgrades. And the first of the nano repair upgrades. Swarm of Cormorant torpedo bombers in from Kavat, just passing through the defending air force of Emperor Penguin straight in towards that Neptune. Shield defending the Neptune nicely at first but eventually gets taken out. But as do the Cormorants, he's only going to lose a snifter of HP. And look at the range on that puppy just blapping away those destroyers. Takes two shots, I think, for each one. Assault in the middle from Mosey. That's repelled. Olex has dropped back here and has got some clink hammers online. So we're going to get some mini base wars going on. Actually quite impressive. He's managed to get them up as quickly as he has. Also has a demolisher up front. Doesn't want to get himself outside the shield though with all of those Viper mobile missile launchers kicking about. And Kavat airlifting a bunch of engineers, some of them T2, into Mosey's old base. And he's still got a presence up here on that little plateau section. That's pretty aggressive, but then why not? You've got naval supremacy around here. And by the looks of things, you've got air dominance as well, thanks to Emperor Penguin with all of his interceptors and ASFs nearby. Battle crews are still getting work done for Tex. It's taken a lot of damage though. It's down to around a, just over a third health, maybe a third now. Salem's just suiciding themselves into the pack, trying to take that Neptune down. But there's two of them. Another one turns up. This is bad news for Issei, who doesn't have the capabilities to deal with that. Mosey oh, taking multiple rounds of artillery to the face. Trying to thin out some of these T3 units with his commander. Where did Olex go? Olex still nearby. He's lost. A few of his clink hammers, though, and the shield gen got taken out. But the Gunther's protected by that woeful, woeful Cybran unupgraded shield tech and probably gets taken out immediately by a demolisher round. Kavat not enjoying it, wants to take out this forward position as soon as possible. Olex re-erects some base shields. Hasn't got much in the way of point defense, though. Mosey 
dipping in and out of the pond. He's got that awesome 104 hit point regen, but needs to be careful. There's Harbingers now, and they are focusing it down big time. Hoplite's nearby firing in as well into the red. 3,700 hit points. But then we've got a wave of torpedo bombers synced up perfectly from Emperor Penguin. Are they going to be able to take him out? Boom, baby! Yes, they are. GG out from Emperor Penguin towards Mosey, who gets taken out. Meanwhile, I say his base is in ruins thanks to the two battle cruisers who have just been getting work done. And those T3 vessels show up. It's not a game anymore. But Olex, having witnessed the demise of his teammate, is on the run now. And bombarded from the sky, there's Corsairs nearby. But having just seen his mate die underwater with these torpedo bombers, he's not, he's not got that easy retreat just into that pond that he's standing nearby. In fact, he looks a little stunned right now into where he's got to take cover. Spectre's now on him as well. We've got... Harbinger's moving in. Is we going to see a second ejection at 33 minutes? I think we are. Whoa, two in a row for Team 1. I think full share is on. Or is it? No, it's not. So no fairies have to die today. But I tell you what, Team 2 might just have to. It's all up to you now, Tex. But if you wanted one guy still to be in it, it's your 1900 rated player, Tex. Who's now moving in on Emperor Penguin's main base with his battle cruisers? We've got four T four Tech Two naval yards. Check out all of these T two air factories as well. Just launching wave after wave of torpedo bombers off the conveyor belt. But how on earth is Tex? going to repel this now they're advancing they've got free reign now at least on this half of the main landmass and they can start to expand a little bit over here it's a little bit of a problem though because of course the naval pressure now that fleet moving on i'm surprised he's not gonna stick around and that's a bad place to stand surely i see finds himself standing in the middle of this fleet and Tex is going to move around back on him. He's got Cloak on him. He's going to control K as Com. I'm guessing because, let's face it, there wasn't much left of him. He had one air factory over there. So perhaps a little bit of a suicide attempt. T3 Mex is getting taken down now by governors. No, because governors can park themselves in here and cause problems for Kavats main base and indeed the little mini base over here are we going to see mass Salem production so that they can traverse the causeway I wonder probably not a bad idea if he does but of course this fleet moving around towards Tex's main base Tex taking steps over here erecting more shield gens and a bank of clink hammer artillery pieces Getting himself something to fire back at with. And is he working on a summit? Yes, he is. So he can park his battleship on the other side of this causeway and just hurl artillery and bad language in general over at these destroyers. Heavy shield on the way for Emperor Penguin's commander. 80% done there. And Tex has been ousted from the mouth of the causeway completely. He is literally bottled up in his main base now. With the exception, of course, of his ability to expand northwards to what was Ice's old base. Emperor Penguin's main base slowly getting taken apart. This is a slight problem. The elevation. Iron cannons don't do well with hills generally. Very, very good at uh, dealing with unwanted vermin, though. Insects vaporized by the iron cannons as well. Ooh. T3 
T3 land factory biting the dust. No more harbingers for you anytime soon. So where does this leave us eco-wise? Well, it's actually... <laughs> there's not much between the two teams right now in terms of eco. They've lost a lot over here on this side of things. And they're about to lose a lot more. All of these T3 and T2 mexes just slowly getting taken out. And there's nothing Team 1 can seemingly do about it. But at the same time, they have opened up a can of sea-based whoop-ass on Texas' main base. Shield collapse there. All of these T2 P-Gens have gone. And is that killing his power? Well, yes, it is, quite frankly. Would you look at the power stalling? And now we're seeing the legs emerge from the destroyers. Dirty cyber in play. Filthy. It's all because they absolutely refuse to use the correct amount of toilet paper when they go to the toilet. That's why they're so angry. They're constantly walking around itchy all day long. This not looking good now. We've even got some land-based artillery. Some serenities over here lobbing shells in. We have got one battleship out. Firing from across the causeway. And another one just completes. Huge group of Corsairs working on the mexes in the backfield. Very strange game this. Can Tex expand quickly enough? All of this up here, now safe, of course, away from the prying forces of Kavat and Emperor Penguin. Tex's commander in the water over here, moving up towards that safer territory. And just three, in fact two air factories remain on that main base island for Emperor Penguin. Kavat hitting back with his Gunthers. There's quite a few Gunthers in there in fact. So these vessels taking some damage. Tex anchored to the spot on a T3 upgrade. 20% done there. Very strange game this. But then it's a strange map. It's always going to produce slightly different outcomes. And I think Tex now just happy to move on from his main base. He's not loitering around here with the summits trying to finish off this fleet. I probably would have left one down here at least taking out the siren but I mean he could have parked up in here and cleared out some of this clink hammers happy to get the job done I suppose but he doesn't seem that concerned in making sure this survives hello strategic missile submarine are we going to see some nukes launched before too long so Emperor Penguin producing just 52 mass. Kavat on around 250-ish. And Tex on around 285. Maybe 260. So there we are. Those are that's where we are eco side of things. So Tex is behind but he's not he's not lost. Especially if he can find a way to snag an ACU kill and bring it to a 1v1. That really would be interesting. Spy planes out for Kavat 
who's pretty unchallenged at the moment. Flying overhead, they will have seen that, and they will have seen that it's getting repairs as well. And there's a massive wave of torpedo bombers bearing down on it. That's a pretty good guess if that's it. There's a lot of shield coverage, though. A lot of bulwark vessels nearby shielding that comm, and he's anchored to the spot at the moment. But the shields disappear at the worst possible time. And it's a wonderful snipe from Kavat. Oh, text, text power stalled at the worst possible time. Wow. And there it is. So, pretty clutch ending from Kavat. Managed to pick him off. Sense the danger. I mean, I suppose they kind of deserved that win from the way it looked out. But, I mean, it was interesting to see how well Tex managed once he defeated I say how well he managed to capitalize and move in and take out all of these bases and completely shift the game around. I mean, it was a very different game. I wonder how long that would have gone on for there if they hadn't managed to get the snipe. But it all, all happens because... Tex had to essentially yield complete air control to his opponents. There was no way for him to, to deal with that. Just got really unlucky on that power stool, though. I'm wondering if uh, those vessels would have been enough to keep it alive. There are so many torpedo bombers, though. I don't know how many went in and how many have come out and how much uh, anti-aircraft firepower there was in the area. I don't think there was that much. His only real option probably would have been to get the commander out onto the side, but he would have had to have cancelled the upgrade to do that, which would have been annoying because I think he was about 75% done. But hey, woulda, coulda, shoulda, who knows how it would have gone. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. Don't forget, please consider checking out the Patreon if you haven't already. It's only a dollar a month, guys, and that's some fantastic content. We've got 22 casts there now. Privileged access only for just a dollar a month. Think what you spend a dollar on in your daily lives. I mean, it's a it's a can of soda or a candy bar. Is that, was, was that a good accent? I don't know. Probably not. Uh, I'm sure I've just offended all of my potential clients, but that's the way it is. <laughs> I'm nothing if not offensive. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. As always, more to come from me in the future. But until next time, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile signing out.